Desk jobs. Truly the American dream. Commute 45 minutes from your suburban home in traffic until you get to work at 856 where you'll send a few pointless emails and then you go to lunch and then when you get back from lunch you have a pointless meeting about those pointless emails. Talk to a couple people you don't like, deal with your dickhead boss and then commute 45 minutes back home where you get to finally relax with your family until your boss emails you to get back to work because you're on salary and there's no such thing as a work-life balance anymore. Now as a full-time internet guy, I know what you're thinking, Tucker, shut up. But let me tell you, before I was doing this, I was doing that and that, I know a lot about that. And I mean, they're not the toughest jobs out there. It's not roofing in July. But there really is nothing more soul crushing than working at a place that thinks a charitable reward for unpaid overtime is a pizza and a mandatory Zoom party. It sucks. So to begin the video, I would like to go over some aspects of working in an office that made me want to dig my eyes out with a sugar spoon, which looks like this. Number one is the other people in the office, and more specifically talking to people that in any other scenario you would avoid like the plague. I mean, if there is a god, he has a cruel sense of humor, because out of the 60 or so people in your office, you're gonna kinda like two or three of them, and you're gonna have to talk to all of them, so that's a bummer. I mean, when you're early to a Zoom meeting and everyone's not there yet, and you just have to like kinda schmooze around for a little bit with other people on the Zoom call, it makes me wanna blow my brains out. Tom, how are the kids? Did you catch the game last night? What'd you get up to this weekend? I rode dirt bikes with my friend Keegan while we were both doing cocaine for 13 hours until the cops came and we hid in a dried out reservoir. But I'm not going to tell you that because I want to keep my job, so I'll tell you I ate a scone and watched The Office. There's also this rule in offices that I like to call corporate passive aggression. You can't be a full dick in an office place. You can be a half dick. You can be, you know, a subtle half chub. Like, you can't call someone a fucking Neanderthal in an email because they're being an absolute dipshit. You have to say things like, per my last email, or reference what I said earlier, you moron. Oh, and the BS that comes with eating lunch in a corporate environment, it's insane. I mean, some jobs will give you the full hour, and a lot of jobs are legally required to, but they'll pull some strings and make sure you feel uncomfortable the whole time you take your break. I mean, they say you get an hour for lunch, but what they really mean is you get 20 minutes to go get that lunch, and then for the next 40 minutes, they're gonna text you every five to figure out where the hell you are. We prefer it if you would eat your lunch at your desk, so you can, you know, be there for any emergencies that arise. You know, because you're a consultant, and you know all those crazy consulting emergencies we see on the news every night. And one of the worst parts of working in a corporate office is knowing that your job is useless and you're practically doing nothing. I mean, some of you in the comments are gonna be like, well, actually, I supply do medicine to Dubai. or I don't give a shit. Most of these jobs are stupid. I mean, let's be honest. Most of these jobs can be done in two days, three days max every week. And the rest of the time, you're just trying to figure out how to make it look like you're doing work. You have to pretend to be doing work because if they find out you're done, they're gonna give you more work and you're still not gonna get more pay. But maybe the worst part of it all is knowing that this is your life now. You look around the office, you see a bunch of people that used to be your age and are now their age and they've been here for a while and you probably will be too. You'll have managers and supervisors approach you and say, hey, keep up the good work and you'll get my job soon enough. And that scares you deeply. You look around and it's just folks like you, future versions of you, just trying to scrape by and get a quick buck so they can get a vacation every four years and escape this hellhole. There is no end, is there? God, it, it just keeps going. There's, there's no way out. There. It's, it's, oh my God, it's, it's a trap. No it's, a, it's a Truly, capitalism no trap that, that oh snatches God. souls. And it's, it's impossible. So instead of letting the unending chasm of mediocrity consume us, I've come up with a few new fun ways to, you know, juice up the work environment. So after working in an office for two to three years, you'll come to realize that everyone's main dream is to get fired for something that's not their fault. That way you'll be able to one, collect unemployment while you look for a better job, and two, you can sue them if it's bad enough, and then you get even more money from a place you hate. So I have devised some tips and tricks on how to get to your dream goal of being fired without doing technically anything that wrong. Number one, if you work at a place that demands you wear a tie, I have devised a perfect plan in order to make people worried about your mental state. All you have to do is go on one of those websites that allows you to personalize clothing with pictures. Probably Etsy is where you're gonna go. Then you gotta find a tie you can personalize and then put a photo of a child on there and make sure it's not your kid. And then when someone stops you in the office and asks, oh, is that your kid? Respond confidently, I don't have any kids. And get right back to typing. The elevator is also a great place to make people uncomfortable without, you know, really doing anything that bad. Social law states that anytime someone comes onto an elevator, we all just ignore that one person so that we can go on with our day. Not you though. That's not your job. New game plan, greet every single person that enters the elevator as if you were hired to do so. Give them a good morning, good afternoon, and good night, because they're gonna hate that more than you can possibly imagine. Or perhaps excitedly call out every time you pass a floor on the elevator as if it's some kind of reverse New Year's Eve. 15, 16, 17, come on everybody, 18. Also, most people agree that you should face forward in an elevator, not you. You're gonna be Blair Witch in it in the corner. 
God, I love working at this establishment. And my final tip is to just turn off the office lights whenever you can. It's easy to do. No one's really guarding them. And, you know, it's open for the public. Plus, you can say, like, you have migraines or, you know, stimulation issues. And then when they fire you for doing that, that's the big money, baby. That medical issues? Oh, baby, you're gonna get that payday. Now go, my pretties, go. Rip off the shackles of button-up oppression that plagues this unholy land. Now that I've talked about all the things that I want you to do in an office, let's talk about all the things that people do in offices that make me so mad I can't breathe. People who type loudly. This is the chewing loudly of the corporate world. I mean, what are you doing? Do you think if you type louder, people think you're working harder? It's not a piano. Type like a human. I mean, are your fingers heavier than the normal person? Is there a medical condition that would make your bone fingers heavier? Is that a, is that a thing? Okay, there is. But if you had that, you would not be typing. So you shut up. Or the way too positive attitude. Now, this truly is an act of war. I mean, hey, man, listen, if you want to pretend that this office is your happy place in front of the boss, to go ahead, brown that nose up as much as you can. But once you waltz over to my cubicle, it's time to be a human again, all right? You can leave that happy-go-lucky shit at the lack of a door. And in the same vein, people who work too hard, stop trying so much. Jesus Christ, they got rid of the corporate ladder in the 80s. You're not gonna climb. Showing up early, leaving late, you're making everyone else look bad, dude. I suggest you use the third worst rule. You go into the office, you take some inventory, you find the worst and second worst people in that office. And then you mold your work schedule around being a little bit better than the second worst person in the office. That way, when they start laying people off, they're gonna fire the first one, obviously, and then you have a little leeway between the second one, and if they fire you at the same time, they were just doing layoffs anyway, it's not that big of a deal. And my biggest pet peeve was probably people trying to hang out with me after work. And I know that makes me seem like an asshole, but you know, once I say no, Take the hint, bud. It just kind of feels like extended office hours. I don't want to go get a margarita with you. I'd rather go home and play video games with people I genuinely enjoy. And that's nothing against you. It kind of is, but you know. I've said it before, but in an office, there's like one out of 100 people are actually cool. Shout out Trent, shout out Brandel. Besides that, you know, it's just Another aspect of corporate life that I noticed that a lot of people just kind of gloss over is the fact that nowadays everyone has a fantastic job title. For some reason, over the past 10 years, these corporations have made entry-level jobs sound like you, you're you the top dog at the company. I think it all started with Subway calling their, their sandwich people sandwich artists. I think that's where it began. So I have gone on LinkedIn and found a bunch of job titles that are insane and 100% fluff. Let's get the big one out of the way, which is account executive, which you or someone you know is definitely an account executive. A big name for the least talented group of people in the entire workforce, I would say. I personally was an account executive two times in my career, and it doesn't mean dick. It's an entry level position, which is just a glorified salesman at the end of the day. Brand evangelist, which I thought was, you know, probably something that has to do with this kind of person, but really it's just a marketing assistant. Assistant, they have that title, and it's someone who's getting someone coffee. Is that not insane? Then we have Chief Heart Officer, who obviously works in a hospital and saves lives. Just kidding, it's just an HR person. It's just another term for an HR person. I mean, that, that went from being awesome to corny in like two seconds. Security Princess. I mean, I'm losing, I'm losing patience. So why do we let all the corporate people have all the fun and making them seem way more important than they actually are? I have found some less than desirable jobs that people usually make fun of, and I've given them way better titles. That way you can throw them on a resume and, you know, make people impressed, because that's what these assholes are doing. Are you a lowly paper boy just trying to make 25 cents before school starts in the morning? Incorrect, you are now a media distribution officer. So enjoy that new job at Netflix. Are you a janitor at a high school that all the kids make fun of and you kind of want to go postal, but you shouldn't do that, because now your new job title is internal custodian manager, which I uh, Google needs one of those. Are you a stay-at-home parent? How are you going to explain that gap on your resume? Offices don't want to hear that you have a child. That's, that's, they won't hire you for that. Well, now you are the head of domestic relations. So you probably could work for the government with that swanky title. Uber driver, you are now a customer destination executive. Landscaper, external growth director. Dog groomer, you are now creative lead of canine maintenance. These, it's all made up. It's all made up. You can do whatever you want. You can lie on your resume. It's, the, the corporate world is a nightmare. So go ahead, work in an office. I'm not gonna blame you. I mean, it's like the best case scenario right now in America. I mean, pay is decent, the benefits are there, and you know, you probably went to school to do whatever you're doing. But when the revolution comes, and it's gonna come, are we gonna need spreadsheet analysts, or are we gonna need farmers and welders? Keep that in mind. I mean, I'm an internet clown, so I don't even, I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. So thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, unless you're an account executive, in which case, I don't want you to be here. I want you to leave. I want you to leave right now. There's a lot of you, and I don't care.